Hey guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. Today it's all about small block Chevy performance. We've got small cams and medium sized cams. We've got carburation and fuel injection. Basically we got a little bit of everything. Check it out. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of upgrades on a 355 small block Chevy, also known as the Gladiator. That's right, the world famous Gladiator from West Tech Performance. We're going to check out a camshaft upgrade going from a mild RV style cam to more of a performance oriented cam. We're also going to take a look at a change from carburation to fuel injection, and not just carburation to fuel injection, but from a dual plane intake mount, which you know works very well, to a tunnel ram style Holly Stealth. EFI intake. Check it out. So we'll get things started in this comparison between a carburation and fuel injection and basically the buildup of a small block Chevy. This was actually West Tech's very famous original Gladiator motor. So it was a 355 cubic inch motor, meaning that it had at one time in its life had forged pistons installed on. They were forged flat top pistons with valve reliefs to allow a bunch of different camshafts because this motor was used basically for testing almost every small block combination that's ever been invented basically. And so that was their test motor motor and they went to it again and again and again and again to test all kinds of different things cylinder heads and camshafts and intake manifolds and when they put it back together they put it back together with a set of forged flat top pistons with the valve release so that we could run a lot of different camshafts and even some fairly big camshafts but in this case we're running a very very small camshaft but the the gladiator the original gladiator had uh airflow research 195 cylinder heads on it so it had good cylinder heads it had uh, 355 cubic inches. The compression with the small chamber 195 heads was around 10 to 1, getting close to 10 to 1. And this particular combination was first started out and run with an Edelbrock Performer intake manifold, not even the RPM or the air gap. It was run with a 650 Demon carburetor. It was run with the long tube headers that West Tech has available for the small block Chevy. They're inch and three quarter. They look like they're um, sprint car headers, but the reason that they were made that way, not because we were running sprint car engines, more because they allowed a lot of clearance for different kinds of... Um, plug styles and angles so they could run all the distributor wires underneath and it provided good access to everything. The headers work very well also. Um, they were run with uh, collector extensions and mufflers so it had it had an exhaust on it. We obviously uh, varied the timing in the air fuel and this thing had an MSD distributor on it. We started things out with uh, an extreme energy 250H, meaning it was a hydraulic flat tappet camshaft, an XE250H-10, and I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. The mild camshaft offered a 432-440 lift split, a 206-12 degree duration split, and 110 degree lobe separation. Well, obviously very mild. In fact, it's the lowest one on the listing for the extreme energy camshafts for the small block Chevy. So we put a small camshaft in it. It had a 650 carburetor. It had the small Edelbrock dual plane intake manifold. And then we ran this thing, obviously, with our engine three quarter headers after optimizing the timing and the air fuel with jetting. And so equipped, this combination made 381 horsepower and 427 foot-pounds of torque. So the combination did very well. Here's what happened though when we replaced the dual plane intake manifold and 650 carbure carburetor with a Holley Stealth Ram EFI induction system. So you can see uh, the red is the EFI and the and the blue is the carburetor. Now the dual plane carburetor actually made more power down low up from 3000 RPM all the way up to 4500 RPM and then the extreme energy or the uh, stealth ram. Now this is basically a tunnel ram with a square lid on top of it, a box, and then the the dual throttle um, throttle body on there, like a like a tune port throttle body. But this one was a, uh, a 58 millimeter, so it had a larger throttle body. Although at this power level, honestly, yeah, I think it was yeah, it was a it was the uh, dual 58 millimeter throttle body. At this power level, that throttle body doesn't offer any power, <laughs> probably over a stock one. But here's what happened when we added the uh, change in intake manifold. 
The power went up to 395 horsepower, although peak torque was actually down from the carbureted deal. It was 417 foot-pounds of torque. So here's what happened when we went from carburation to fuel injection. Now, obviously, you guys can argue, and please let me know in the comments, should we have run this combination because the, the 355 Chevy already had um, good cylinder heads on it, and this wasn't a really big camshaft, but may have run better with like a dual-plane RPM air gap. Uh, so let me know in the comments if we should have compared this to an RPM air gap rather than the standard Edelbrock performer. We have taken a look at the power gains or the difference in power actually between the dual plane carbureted intake manifold and then the Holly Stealth Ram EFI intake manifold on our mild combination. Now that, that 355 Gladiator motor was equipped with the Comp 250 cam, which you can kind of consider uh, an RV or a torque style cam. They're obviously much better cam choices if you're looking to make more power. But what we're going to take a look at is what happens when we do go up in camshaft. You usually have to, and, and we'll definitely see that in this case there's usually a trade-off in power between hey we want all the low speed power but you know what i really like is a lot more top end power and we'll see that when you want one you get usually less of the other and that's exactly happened here so this was our combination with the carbureted combination and then our stealth ram as a reminder but here's what happened when we went from the Extreme Energy 250 hydraulic flat tap cam and we stepped up to an, X, an XFI, which is uh, one step above the Extreme Energy stuff, a hydraulic roller cam. And this one was a 268 cam. So I'll go ahead and we can show you that's in green. I'll go ahead and show you, give you the specs of that camshaft. The extreme, the XFI camshaft differs from the regular Extreme Energies primarily by the fact that they have much more lift. Um, and this one also had uh, a wider LSA. So this camshaft, the, the, the 268 XFI HR13 camshaft offered a 218, 220 degree or 224 degree duration split, a 575, 65 lift split, and 113 degree load separation. Well, as I said, it was a hydraulic roller and not a hydraulic flat tap. And as we see from this, we can tell that the the XFI camshaft made a lot more power out at the top. It made 436 horsepower. Peak torque actually didn't change dramatically. Now, this thing was still equipped with the Holly Stealth Ram EFI intake manifold. You can see that peak torque didn't change dramatically between the two camshafts. So that's an often confused um, variable when people start talking about putting more camshaft in it. Oh, it lost power down low. Yeah, but the, the peak torque can actually be the same. In this case, it was still 416 foot-pounds, and I think it was 417 foot-pounds with the smaller camshaft. They actually made right at the same peak torque, but the curves are dramatically different between the camshafts, and where they want to make power is dramatically different. Now, with the Stealth Ram and this 268 XFI camshaft, this thing is wanting to make power at the top of the RPM range, And but if you take a look at this, everything below 45 or 4600 RPM, it's now making less power than it did with the smaller camshaft. So the camshaft, even with the same intake and cylinder heads and displacement and compression and all that, will help you determine where you want to like where you want to have your torque production at so with a smaller cam if you're if you want from you know 2000 to 4000 or 4500 rpm let's say you have it in a truck application that smaller cam would probably be a better choice but if you want to rev this thing out to 6500 rpm and make a lot more power out of the top then the bigger camshaft is kind of the way to go obviously the ideal situation would be to have both <laughs> but uh, short of variable cam timing which we don't have in the small block Chevy that would be difficult to get but this is a pretty good example of showing you what happens not only when we go from carburation to fuel injection and, and obviously completely different uh, intake designs and that's really what the change was it has less to do with how we're supplying the fuel than what the design of the intake manifold is but it also shows you even with that same intake manifold with a mild camshaft the power curve is dramatically different than when we go from the mild cam to even what i would call a medium-sized cam in the 268. let's get to our conclusion okay guys what's our takeaway on this little adventure with the 355 small block chevy aka the gladiator well we saw a number of things first of all well there's a reason that there's so much 
aftermarket sport for the small block Chevy because it, it did in the past and continues to respond very well to all these different kinds of performance upgrades. It makes a good platform to demonstrate these differences in power. So we'll start off with the camshaft. Choosing the right camshaft, obviously for your small block Chevy or really any motor, is very important. As we saw here, choosing a mild RV style cam worked out very well on the 355, and so did the larger XFI 268 cam. Obviously, these two cams, although neither one of them are really big, they are designed for different applications. If you're looking at an RV style cam, like a truck or some kind of application, where you're concerned with low speed power and you want torque, the milder cam obviously is a much better choice. Even with everything else being the same, the intake manifold, the heads, the displacement, compression, all that stuff, the camshaft is going to dictate that that motor is going to work much better at lower engine speeds and work better for a torque application. Now, however, if you want your small block to be rev happy and go out to 6500 and make a lot more power doing that so that you can enjoy it for like a street trip kind of application in your Camaro or Chevelle or heck even in a C10 truck, obviously the slightly bigger 268 cam is a much better way to go, but it shows how much versatility the small block has using one cam or the other to dictate what we're going to do with it. Now, what about the fuel injection versus carburation? It's much less about that than it was really about a different intake design. We saw the dual plane intake, which is perfect for the mild application, especially with that small RV style cam, and it works very well, and it always does. It's really the go-to intake design, and the one that I recommend more often than not for people putting together any kind of street, even a street strip application, a dual plane manifold works very well. But we saw how it compares to what is essentially a EFI version of a tunnel ram intake manifold and we saw there again there was a trade-off low speed to high speed kind of thing and we saw that the EFI stealth ram worked very well even with a larger 268 camshaft. There you have it small block performance in a nutshell. I'm Richard Holder make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff more testing as always coming up.